Come with us if you want a game. This week on Let's Play. Hey guys, how's everybody doing this week? Uh, we're going to start with talking about what we played. Sork, what would you play this week? Oh, you always goes with me. I played some Max Payne 3. I'm so close. I can't get through the police station. Um, that, the usual Angry Birds, uh, Star Wars 2, uh, some GTA 3 on the phone, and that's about it. Cool. Uh, Chachi, what would you play this week besides GTA, of course? <laughs> um, I played some uh, Ingress. I played some Bingo. Um, Bingo. I played Pac-Man and GTA 5. Cool. Did, did you get online with GTA 5 yet? Today was the big um, day. I got online <laughs> long enough to do the first mission that you don't have an option of, and that was it. Like, it wouldn't load... Uh, the map or anything after I completed that mission, so I just shut it off. Hmm. Yeah, they said it was going to be slow at first, so hopefully we all we all right. get online later. With, with the amount of with the amount of copies they sold, um, this was expected. It's not SimCity bad, yeah. So <laughs> I'm not that worried about it. At It'll, least you do stuff on there, like sometimes people, people will. Uh, uh, drop off soon and it'll be fine. So I'm not I'm not that worried about it. Hey, Riz, what did you play this week? GTA Online. Unlike Chachi, I got online. But Chachi got online. <laughs> well, more for more than like a few seconds, I got on and I did actually three missions so far. Oh wow! Uh, I did the like the race Chachi was talking about. I stopped the drug bust, or no, no. Let me let me clear that up. I took somebody else's drugs, and I just just completed a death match. Victorious, okay. by the way. Hmm. Victorious. Cool. Did you play anything else? <coughs> no. All right. <laughs> um, I played Bobby. the usual. I played the usual as uh, uh, as as you do. Uh, Avengers Alliance, uh, Simpsons Papped Out, Animal Crossing, which I finally traded in some uh, turnips this week at the turnip uh, stock market. <coughs> um, I found the lady on Sunday morning. She, she's a very nice warthog, and I traded it turnips for bells and worked out in my favor. Um, I also played GTA Five, and I played the challenge this week, which was Terminator versus – or no, Robocop versus Terminator. Uh, did anybody else play this, this game? No, how'd it go? It, 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 it went okay. It, it wasn't as bad as the it other movie games. It, um, it, the, wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't, it uh, wasn't Home Improvement. I mean, no, it wasn't uh, Home Improvement and it wasn't Rain, Wayne's World. It was actually a decent hope. game. Um, it actually had a really cool story, story idea, mm -hmm. how to, to merge the two universes. Um, it basically said that Robocop, uh, the Skynet built, used, um, the same company that RoboCop uh, used was it Cyberdyne? Uh, uh, OCP. I think OCP. Okay, I, I never really was into RoboCop, which I should see it. I right love now. RoboCop. Um, but yeah, they said that uh, and uh, Sky, Skynet was built off of that system, and or they used that to, to create Skynet, and RoboCop like found out about it and somehow merged with the thing and it. Gave all Skynet all his powers and stuff like that. Kind of a cool, cool uh, plot thing for the video game. I thought even for back in the day, and like Sega Genesis games really didn't have a lot of storyline. So, mm -hmm. um, and, and the gameplay was pretty decent, uh, and it was kind of it, it kind of reminded me of like a, a more upgraded Contra. So, uh, not bad. It was an okay version of Contra. I never played this yeah. one, but I always remember like the RoboCop games actually being pretty okay mm -hmm. for side scrollers. Yeah, this one wasn't bad. Mm -hmm. than, it was like, better than the Terminator one that came out. Yeah, wasn't it that first person shooter one? Yeah, that was terrible. Really? On, like, the, you talking about the arcade one? Yeah, the arcade version. Hmm. I Not have anymore. a confession. Yeah, confess. Mm -hmm. um, I've only seen half of a RoboCop movie. Whoa. I haven't seen any of them. And I shut it off. Wow. Oh, no. Wow. The new one looks kind of decent. Oh, like yeah. the remake. It's not, it's not Stallone, I actually so had, um, I had for the PC, the uh, Robocop 3D, which was like mm. so futuristic. 
none of the polygons actually had any texture <coughs> to them. None of the polygons had polygons. It was just all straight <laughs> polygons. It was before we had the like quake textured mapped polygons kind of situation. So that was fun. But all right, well, we got some playoff baseball going on, so we're going to move on to our next topic. Um, <laughs> things you should be made aware of. All right. Um, I was reading Kotaku, and um, they were talking about the worst uh, downloadable content of all time. Um, the so new Sonic the Hedgehog game. If you pre-order at, uh, if you pre-order the game at Amazon, oh, it's called no. Sonic Lost World. Oh they, no! The downloadable content is twenty-five extra lives. Oh. What? Yeah. It says a safety net for the risk taking Sonic player. What? No. Yeah. So this, no. this is Sega a no. They're, they're not. Sega no. Sega no. And, and somebody. I, uh, I don't know. I, first of all, they're making another Sega. They're going to make another Sonic game. They won't stop. They, they, they're making money at it they, somehow. Oh my. Well, people will still buy it. That's the that's the problem. It, it, uh, have have they learned nothing from Sonic Adventures? Have they learned nothing? I don't know. But uh, somebody in the comments said that this this was uh, no this is no worse than horse armor. And somebody commented back, um, it is, and I'll tell you why. With horse armor, you got what you got for what you got for your money was an aesthetic bonus, meaning um, you you change the look of the horse basically. This is actually paying for part of the game that you should be earning in the game. Yep. You're actually paying for the game that you're supposed to be getting. It's it's ridiculous. Mm. Yep. Mm. I, but, I love, um, I, and I think it's a little off base, but I love the comparison they're doing in here with the Ninja Turtles arcade game in the comments. Yeah. But I, yeah. This ultimately, is, I mean, yeah. What's up? Uh, ultimately, uh, they're not the only one doing this. No, no, no. But it's um, just... because they announced in the Nintendo Direct that uh, the next Legend of Zelda game, uh, like between mm. worlds. Uh, you will be able to buy all of the dungeon items at the beginning of the game. Yeah, that was that's one of instead our new of, stories coming Instead up. of finding them in the dungeons like you're supposed to. And yeah. that's horrible. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but you can rent them. That's yeah. even worse. Is this really any different than the than the um the iOS games that you can uh sort sort sort. What? What is Okay, uh, that, that you can unlock everything instead of instead of like actually working through the game. Ch Chachi, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you a question here. Okay, what what is the best part of playing any Legend of Zelda game? <laughs> that noise. <laughs> 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 Wait, what? Item, the item found noise is one of the greatest parts of Legend of Zelda. Yep. Because because you can buy it for, what, a buck? Yeah, you, buck. You, play, you play the game, no. you open that chest, you hear that noise, bam, you accomplish something, and the game rewards you with it. They're like, oh, here's some awesome music. Right. It, well, we're going to get a little uh, – we're going to touch on that a little bit more later. Um, but we got an email, guys. Oh, uh, from our friend Alex Cars, friend of the Wrestling Mayhem Show, and friend of Insert Coin to begin. Um, he's actually in our extra life, uh, helping us out there too. Um, sure. he's, he said, "Hey guys, I wanted to, I wanted to let you know everyone know about some game related stuff with my favorite wrestling promotion, Chikara. Some of you might have been aware of a video game project that never went anywhere called Rudo Resurrection. Mm -hmm. But what I want to bring to your attention is a bit bigger, an alternate reality game or ARG." that appears to be happening over the past few months that combines viral marketing with social media to bring awareness to the wrestling brand. Uh, it's not so much a video game itself, but the promotion itself is, or was, influenced by comic books and video games, so I thought the current campaign, I Am Chikara, was worth talking about. Uh, if you need something more directly related, I believe they still have a fun little game called Block and Fight, though, on the Apple and Android markets. Uh, thanks for reading. They also have one that's a uh, coloring app. For uh, like little chippy versions mm -hmm. of the Chikara characters, I I quelled two two uh, 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 kids 
that I was babysitting by pulling that out on the <laughs> iPad and uh, just it was quiet from then on. So I have they, 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 they are Chikara. I have been playing uh, Block and Fido. Or is that what it's called? Yeah, Block yeah, and Fido. Yeah, I was playing and that too. It, it's more of like a bejeweled slash Candy Crush version of wrestling mm-hmm. things with wrestling <laughs> faces on there. Uh, and it is okay for a while. Then it gets, you know, repetitive. And obviously you go back to Grand Theft Auto five and others. <laughs> um, but yeah, that there's, they do market themselves really well at Shikara mm-hmm. and I don't want to get into wrestling. This is not the wrestling podcast, uh, wrestling mayhem show. It's on next at nine o'clock, nine and about, <laughs> 8.30, 9 o'clock. Uh, check your lo- local listings at circlejohnmedia.com. Same um, time, same bad channel. But they are promoting themselves for kids, and they are doing it well because they're doing coloring books, on, or, well, coloring things on uh, your I- iPhone or Android app. They're doing Bejeweled with the games that they're at, they have on there. And I want to see what this get the other game looks like. I don't know the other game they were talking about. Um, just that they have, they are a fun promotion to watch pretty much. And, awesome. but yeah, cool. uh, they're, they direct it towards kids and it's still awesome. All right. For us. Well, thanks for that email, Alex. Thank you, Alex. All right. Uh, moving on Thank to our news portion of the show. Um, Riz, I think they announced a very important movie coming up. They did. Um, Legendary, for those who don't know who Legendary is, and I don't know where you've been for the past few years, uh, the same guys who did Dark Knight, the, the, I think the Dark Knight trilogy, uh, they did so many other ones. I can't think of the top of my head. But they are about to. But they announced a very new one that's going to come out in 2015. <sighs> Mass Effect. Yay! Mass Effect. We, we've talked about this before on, on how a movie adaptation in video games needed something big, and for me. As a fan of Mass Effect, and as a fan of stuff that Legendary has done in the past with the Dark Knight trilogy, they they can they have they they already have my money. Don't mess it up, <laughs> please. Shut up and take my money. Uh, but yeah, it's in it's in pre production right now. They are casting they have not announced who's in it who's directing who's pro- producing but they are they did release the fact that they are having the male shepherd be the lead which is kind of weird but which is kind of cool and kind of awkward because it is also a female based game as well mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. with female shepherd as well so i don't know if they're going to mix in shepherds as well or like put male shepherd and have a sibling of female shepherd or, you know, just mix them up a little bit. Um, but I am really interested in seeing where this is going. And for those that don't um, know the track record of legendary, um, mm-hmm. it, they started basically with Batman begins and then that whole series. Mm-hmm. Um, but they, yeah, let- they've handled stuff like, uh, Watchmen 300, oh. Uh, beer festival things, Aunt Bully, uh, Sucker Punch, basically anything uh, Zack Snyder has been attached to, I think, is on mm-hmm. here. Uh, Pacific Rim that just came they out. Have, they have the, a good track record. Wrath of the Titans. But, like, it, uh, they have the Inception, and then they have Jonah Hex. So I mean, it, it's back. I have forth, one problem, but I, I think it's it's more in the positive with these guys. Mm-hmm. I have one problem though. Hmm. What's that? For those of you who know what Mass Effect is, you know who plays Joker. Mm-hmm. Not not the Joker, but Joker the pilot. Okay. <laughs> um, they announced that Seth Green will not be in the movie. Okay. Seth Green made Joker. He, had the fa- he has the face of Joker. He has mm-hmm. the ability to be Joker. 
and they don't have they're not going to put Seth Green I, in there. Yeah, that could be. I mean, he is busy with a new series on Fox if it lasts. No, I don't oh, think it's going to last. Uh, dad, yeah, Dad's going to last. I'm sorry. Um, Which, but, co- coincidentally, is setting in a video game studio. Yeah, you know, I watched the first two episodes today, and I was kind of like, okay, this 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 could go somewhere, you know? Mm, I didn't like but the first overall, two and another weird twist to it. I'm sorry, I'm interrupting you guys. No, uh, I wrote this in the on the in the story. So if you want to read uh, first my the, the, my excitement about this and my what I my my dream casting, if you will. Uh, but I've also commented on the fact that this movie is basically fan fiction. Uh, because a fan of the Mass Effect series is writing it. They have no other uh, movie tie-ins. There is no real... like The person who's writing this movie has never had anything produced. Wow. Hmm. So it's it's in his hands. Um, another, another cool thing they might be doing is uh, I know uh, a lot of the makeup effects and stuff. They may bring uh, Holly Conrad, who was in the uh, Comic-Con movie. Um, mm. I heard she's like going to be doing makeup and stuff for the movie. So that, that'll nice. be cool. Because yeah, she that, really does a lot of nice of the, costumes and stuff. That's, that's one of the main things that, that they're going to have trouble with, or I hope succeed in. Because – there's a sorry. There's Krogan. Krogan is going to be huge and like massive. Mm-hmm. Uh, Garrus is the Turian who's going to be in all makeup probably. Mm-hmm. It's going to be weird. It's going to be fun to see what they do with these characters. I hope they don't uh, go all CG though. Um, I hope they use practical effects. Like go to space. No. That- what do you mean? What? No. Yeah, I know, well, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. In other like the uh, video game, yeah. In other video game movie news, uh, World of Warcraft also got greenlit for a 2015 yeah. uh, release. By and, legendary. Um, From legendary, yeah. Wow. Yeah, and um, it is uh, in pre-production as well, um, and that's pretty much all the information that they've released on it at yeah. the time, um, but. It, on IMDb, I found a fun fact um, that you guys especially will enjoy. Did um, you have to go to Pro to get the fun fact? Because that's no. taking me off right um, now. Apparently, uh, director Yu Bull contacted Blizzard about directing the film. <laughs> and Blizzard, Blizzard said, no. we will not sell the movie rights, not to you, especially not to you. <laughs> that might be the best response ever. <laughs> They said that uh, uh, a bad movie uh, would probably kill <laughs> the, the current uh, uh, profit rate that the, the game has. <laughs> so, yeah, screw you, you bull. You're not touching <laughs> it. Nope. Nobody's going postal on this movie. <laughs> yeah. uh, so. Next story, Bobby. All right. Um, Brother Sorg, Sorg of, or bro- Brother of Sorg. <laughs> Uh, Sorg, our own Sorg here uh, wrote about uh, the new Steam announcements that were made. Um, we talked about this a little bit last week. Um, Sorg, do you know much about the uh, announcements that they had? Yeah, so the trilogy was you know basically all Steam box Steam in your living room as you know it was at Steam.com slash Steam you know interface. living room. Uh, of course, we had what was the OS was Monday, right? I'm yeah. trying to remember the sequence of events. So. The second announcement was the Steam Machines. Yes. Not related to Wrestling Mayhem Show. You get that joke if you listen to the Wrestling not, Mayhem not, Show not for like Steam six years. That, that um, the Wrestling Mayhem Show at 9 o'clock. So there's was the machines, which are basically going to be, uh, it sounds like pretty contained console-like machines um, that you put in your living room, and, and they're, they're going to run the Steam OS. Um, they're going, and there's the last one was the controller. The controller, I'm a little fuzzy on the whole concept with it. Um, uh, other than the comic book I sent Chachi there. Um, so, so the, the cool thing is they're going to do a beta program. They're going to send out 300 of these boxes. Um, 
and there's a little bit of a mission thing. I've done everything except for the actually hook up a, re a controller to my living, the big picture mode. But it's like, you know, have 10 friends on Steam, uh, hook up, boot up big pic big picture mode on your Steam and, and use a game controller to show, hey, I'm interested in doing this, you know, and I can do this. Um, mm -hmm. And there was like one other one and it was like signing up for their, their, their thing. They, uh, last I checked, like a day into it, they already had 34,000 people eligible for this. So... Wow. Good luck there, guys. Um, but uh, aside from this, it looks like the Steam OS is going to be free, so I can throw it on any computer I want. So that could be, you know, for us tinkers that are into PC gaming, anyways. Um, I, I think this is a cool concept. Now, the controller is basically. Help me if I get weird. this right off the top of my head. Yeah. Um, instead of having buttons um, where you would have your face buttons and then your face mm -hmm. directional, these are touch pads. Yeah, they look like. If if somebody took a mouse and just like grafted it to a controller, yeah. So there's, there's a weird. I try to pull it up here. Yeah, there's a weird uh, comic strip going on. Yeah, going around. <laughs> I saw that. That with uh, with some guy playing with the press bu with the buttons. It was uh, Gabe and Taiko. No, it was. Uh, yeah. it, it was. And uh, it was pretty much a portal hole. No, that was Control Delete. Oh, it was, okay. Yeah, I thought, I thought it was okay. Uh, yeah, mind. this is the one was, I sent over to Chachi earlier. So that one, yeah, yes, this that, one. That's you're what they were talking about, and, and it's, it's rubbing Gabe's nipples. He actually made yeah. an anime gif out. No, it made oh, an animated God. too. Wow, yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, pretty it's probably funny. true. <laughs> it's creepy. <laughs> like it, it, you, you guys say think that's a joke, but that's probably what happens. Like <laughs> oh, the, it, this. The Steam I'm, machine doesn't actually play any video games. It's just a way <laughs> to get millions of millions of fingers on the guy's nips. I don't think it's on the guy's nipples, though. I think it's more down. Uh, so belt. this is what it looks like. Let's get on on the topic here. Um, so uh, one <laughs> cool. Looks so okay, like if Darth Vader melted into a controller. Now, granted, like I, I think with this, you can plug in your Xbox controller, whatever you want, whatever you feel comfortable with. Mm. But this is this is meant to be kind of their solution that they're hoping to, to sell off with these machines. Um, the one I heard really good concept. This is uh, this week in tech. I think it was. Um, or maybe tech news today, but um, so we have the idea that okay, there's a Linux machine. We have at least 200 games more coming. But if you don't have them, there's um, the idea of streaming it off of your computer, right? Apparently, like one of the biggest things when you have an analog stick, like we, we're used to on our Xboxes and our Playstations, there's a potential for a lot of delay because you have to transfer that analog into a digital signal, right? Because these are touch pads, so it's a directly digital signal that's going on there with your finger, right? This is going to help the streaming idea of it. Now, if the whole thing, if this doesn't feel like if this doesn't feel like a good controller, if it doesn't make sense, then the whole thing goes out the window, obviously. But now, but it kind of that idea, I think, is kind of intriguing. To we did this, so this component will work better. So. Um, have you guys heard any of uh, anything about how it works that maybe has you swinging one way or another? Because I think <sighs> looking at this thing, we're all like, "What the hell is it?" Right? Mm -hmm. mm. It's I, it, it's I think it's more like a game paddish type system, it, like a the controller itself, right? Sorry, I, I was focused on the game. Yeah, two nothing pirates. <laughs> um, you saw you saw me freak out there, sorry, uh, but. It just looks more like a like what you get when you play your uh, play games on your uh, iPhone or Android phone. Like your hands are pretty much the same, mm -hmm. and they work two different things. Yeah, and it, I, I don't know. It 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 looks weird. Hey, again, it's just one of those things you're not going to know until you get it in your hands. Um, but I love the idea. I want to see what like they showed multiple size boxes in the picture. When they were talking about it, so that leads to believe there will not be a one size fits all for this. I so, do like that idea. I, so, so if I want a box that's two hundred bucks, let's say, uh, that will run at least all of last year's games and and the bare minimum to run, you know, today's games. Mm -hmm. Sure, I, you can I, do that. If you want insane uh, crisis, fully running full HD, holy crap on your on your machine, you pay you know, the thousand dollar machine or something like that. Um, specialized machines that do certain things. I, 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 so you have a lot of options. It has that PC element of choice, 
Okay. Um, there were versions of these steam boxes that they were talking about with other manufacturers that were very uh, modular components. So I wonder if that concept's rolling into this as well, that you can just, I buy a component instead of like opening it up like you would and putting a card in and having open circuit boards. I stick this box in and, it, you know, this component in and, and it's like, you know, your chip is actually in a little cube or something and it connects, mm -hmm. right? Um, so all of these are intriguing. All of these, I think, are game changers. All of these, as we're talking about something like on the Awesome Cast, where everybody's getting Surface tablets and these all-in-one PCs and everything else, and it's th this divisification. I I think this goes along with I have a device, I get a Surface, I'm not gaming on that thing, right? Even mm -hmm. if you get a Pro, it's only going to do so much. It's going to run that Halo game great, but that the one that's made for it, but it's not going to run Halo Five, right? Yeah. Ideally, you would think. Um, so I think it gets this idea. I buy a Surface, Surface Pro, or an iPad, or a or 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 an Android tablet for the work. I buy a Steam machine for the PC gaming, and now you've separated that concept out a little bit because people are buying towers to do their gaming anyways. Let's let's separate it out more. Oh, that's that's my take on the whole thing. So, cool. I agree, Sorg. Maybe there's more questions than answers in these. I'm nodding in agreement with you. Uh, it's still early in the process, too. <laughs> it, is, right. it is. And we don't know. It's all about the execution. We don't see how they're going to execute mm -hmm. it. We've been uh, glossed the idea of how this thing is going to work. Yeah. And we're just grateful they announced it. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Um, to touch back on real quick what we were talking about earlier about uh, the Legend of Zelda announcements today mm -hmm. and the Nintendo Direct video, um, what, what do you guys think? Do you think they're going to have, like, a DLC system for Zelda, or do you think it's just going to be in-game stuff? Like, Why? Do you think, do you why, think why have... Oh, sorry. I, the only no, way a DLC system can work is if there's missions. Okay. That's it. Yeah. I don't, I don't which, want to pay... I don't want to pay to do something that I can do in the game for free. From from the sounds of it, it sounds like they're going to do temples like they've always done, but just you can go to whatever temple you want to go to at any time. But like we said, too, half of the fun was getting the weapon for that specific temple, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and you can all is, about the puzzles. Yeah, exactly. Why is and, Ninten Nintendo – stop it. And you can stop actually – didn't, didn't the thing say you can rent the, the items for like 20 rupees? Why? Would like, you that, want to why? Rent? Why? It, it, no. It's irritating me. I, I yeah. said on Twitter yesterday that Nintendo has been having a hard time earning my respect mm. lately. This doesn't help any. I, I really think it's going to, hey, it works great for Candy Crush. It's working great for Angry Birds. Uh, everybody loves Zelda. So let's let's get them in on this too. You know, let's you know get what, in on the microtransactions. You know, you know what the difference is between Angry Birds and Zelda? Execution and history. Zelda. <laughs> that, that basically answered both the things I said. Yes, I, you can Zelda buy five bones Angry Bird. for. It is not Candy Crush. It is Zelda. Mm -hmm. you, you can buy one bomb for 99 cents per bomb we didn't like have 30 five years bomb pack for we didn't have 30 years of bucks. angry birds between before they started microtransacting us we had a year of yeah. it before they started doing that and you don't even need that um yeah i, I i'm with you on that it, this is um i don't think microtransactions are going to work on nintendo consoles <laughs> i don't think that's the audience for it I think if you put a Zelda game on one of these and wanted me to do microtransactions, it would work. Yeah, that would work. I still won't. I well, I, I because the audience that isn't <coughs> going to go get a console is the audience that's making that's buying, God knows what in Candy Crush, uh, you know, and and making them millions of dollars and and an OMG pop. Well, okay, this that didn't work out, or you know, your Farmvilles of the world, your Avenger Alliances of the worlds, you know, <laughs> or you could actually bring was, a Zelda, which is a good game to begin I with. Gonna, I was gonna say, Sorg, um, you could research the Master Sword for tw for two days, or you no. can unlock it for twenty gold right now. Uh, there you no, go. No. I mean, and, and I think <laughs> if you introduce them in that way versus introducing them on a Nintendo console. Mm -hmm. I think that's the difference. I really think so. that's the difference. I, you don't think microtransactions when it comes to that. Even 
even I mean, it's a it's they, they I don't think have they really been terribly successful? In the, yeah, they have been on the Xbox mm-hmm. actually. There's been a few big attempts. I mean, that that sh- uh, shoot many rob- robots had a pretty good microtransaction. Uh, but uh, that was yeah. different. Mm-hmm. Uh, the weapons that they released were weapons that you couldn't get in the game. Yeah. And they were fun weapons. And that was more DLC. That was more the DLC right. idea. That, well, that was not the, the point whole... of that game. Yeah. I, it, it was like like you. Didn't you go out and buy the uh, the Noming missile launcher? I oh, I, I love the Noming missile launcher. I think no, no, no. I, I didn't go buy it. I I remember. Well, was it you that like went ahead and, and bought like the hundred gold or something like that so you could get a bunch of stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. I, um, I, I I was all in from that game. Uh, yeah, I don't. Th- I, I don't think it. we. I don't think we. We played through most of that game, and we didn't pay for anything outside of the game itself. I don't think, like maybe one gun or something like that. Um, <laughs> but 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 again, I think it's more acceptable on the Xbox to do something like that. I paid ten dollars for this game to do this. You're going to pay how much for the Zelda game? This is what a DS. This is for three DS, right? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, what a 3DS? It, it's like a full bucks? price game. So it's like thirty to forty yeah. bucks, and then you're going to make me pay for stuff? No, it doesn't work that way. Not not in a way. It doesn't that work that way for Zelda to begin with. No. Well, well, Nintendo does do the double dipping on the sales tax too. If you buy if you buy a Nintendo points card, you pay tax on it, and then for each game you purchase in the the um virtual console store or whatever you have to pay tax on that each each game that's not nintendo Bobby, double dipping Bobby, that's you're the making government double hurt. dipping well that's the government and that's why they're shut down government. <laughs> take that government day. yeah Don't Anyways. fuck with their games move, move okay. on before i have we're, we're gonna move on to the boss battle oh, question oh, here um, my head. what has been your favorite new feature of this generation of consoles or this generation of gaming it could be DLC. There's so many things that we're was, talking like, about. This one that's coming to a in. close that we're currently gaming on, right? Yeah, like what what feature from this new console era or iOS era or whatever? What has you been your favorite th- thing from it so far? Okay, I got like one. new new innovations and stuff like multiplayer. That. Uh, it wasn't a new innovation, a but one. I think it really matured. Okay. Um, it is easy to do multiplayer as long as you're not on Nintendo's consoles. Um, it, it, I mean, how easy is it for us to just boot it up? Oh, Chachi's online. Hit the button. We're dropped in a game. You know, right. the franchises mm-hmm. like Call of Duty really brought that up. Your Xbox Live, I gladly pay for it because it does so well with that. Your Sony mm-hmm. PlayStation's do, uh, done leaps and bounds by it. And yes, it started Not last really. generation, but it was. Mm, I mean, it started on Xbox, which hardly anybody had. The PlayStation Two implementation was. I have to go buy a hard drive, really. Um, for any games that use something like that, but Final Fantasy, I guess. Um, yeah, it was like the only one. Final like that Fantasy. was the baby, the baby, yeah. baby steps for that. Um, and and it's 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 brought that ease of use that we've been using since we were using GameSpy, you know, on the PC, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's a big thing, and I think that's why Call of Duty is the biggest franchise. I think that's now we have uh, gaming as sports. Now we have – it's begotten all these other great things of this generation. Mm-hmm. Nice words, Sork. I'm going to go with DLC if done right. Mm-hmm. Not piddly DLC that you pay for like horse armor and stuff like that or 25 lives. Um, I'm talking pass. like st- extending the story of a game that you yeah. like. Yeah. Like uh, with Bioshock coming out with new, new DLC, um, the Grand Theft Auto um, – the two they did for Grand Theft Auto 4. Um, the, the Red Dead Redemption's uh, an Undead oh, Nightmare. Stuff like that. Like, that really was, good yeah. DLC. Assassin's Creed doesn't have that. Done right. Yep. Yeah, Assassin's Creed. They had, like, really, the uh, the George Washington one was really good. You know? Got Stuff to like it, that. Haven't got to it, but I love the idea. <laughs> I can't wait to yeah. get to that one. That's gonna... That's, I, I haven't played it yet either, but it sounds cool. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um... <clears throat> I don't want to repeat anybody, so I, even though DLC is one of the big, awesome in, innovations, mm-hmm. uh, but the one thing that we're miss that that we that you quote that you put on this thing is in the generations consoles. What didn't we have before the Xbox 360 came out? We didn't have Netflix. We didn't have Hulu. Mm-hmm. 
-hmm. We didn't have YouTube. We didn't have all this innovative stuff on our Xbox. Persistent internet connections. Mm -hmm. Yes. Like, like again, Xbox started it, but... But it is building and building and building into a, well, a hard drive, a computer, mm-hmm. a, a supercomputer almost. You can play your games on it. You can do, you can go on the internet. You can go look up porn. You can go, uh, go to YouTube and search every, anything under the sun. And I know I said porn, but you can bang. You can, do, hmm? you can bang. You can bang. Mm-hmm. Porn. Uh, you can go on <laughs> to you know uh, what what you can go on and watch movies on, like I said, Netflix and all these different other HBO Go. You can watch it on. You can watch your shows on there. You can. You, they even have cable companies. Cable companies are now putting their stuff on Xbox and on mm-hmm. PlayStation Three. And like we, I. I we are wrestling fans. WWE is already putting stuff out there. Paper UFC, news. they're all combining their internets mm-hmm. into gaming consoles. <clears throat> and that is one of the bigger innovations and features of these generation generation of consoles that I love. Because mm-hmm. I can I can not play video games and still get money out of my Xbox 360. Chachi, you got one. Um, well, it, my main one is the online uh, multiplayer play. Mm-hmm. Um, that has been taken to a whole new level to the point where I don't have to drag a PC uh, to a friend's house uh, to play a game with them. We've done that a couple times. Right. It, it, <laughs> yeah, we've done it a couple times, but I don't have to now. Um, but that one's already been said. Uh, I... I'm going to say uh, the size of games. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, the games themselves have just gotten huge, and I don't mind. We're playing uh, – Chachi? Yeah. Chachi and Bobby, mm-hmm. aren't we playing a game where they give us two discs with one just being installing the game mm-hmm. on, our, on our Xbox? Right, sure, sure. And, it, and, and it's not even like the physical size of the game. I mean, like the gameplay size of the game, because it, it took me two and a half songs to drive from one side of the map to the other side of the map. <laughs> two and a half real songs. Was Eddie Murphy's Party All the Time one of them? You know what? I, I don't even believe that song's in the game. Because I, I heard it yet either. I, I heard it. yet to hear that song in the I game. I heard it. Go to, go to the space. <laughs> so, uh, I, I, I'll, I'll believe it when I hear it. But, yeah, it took two and a half songs for me to get from one side of the map to the other. And <laughs> the thing that pissed me off about that is when I got there, I got a call for a mission, so I had to drive... All the way back. <laughs> so four and a half or five songs. Yeah. So I, I mean, it, the size of games is just outrageous, and it's yeah. amazing. Um, Brother Sorg in the chat room brings up another good one. Um, he likes how consoles actually change their software over their their life with uh, this generation with updates and patches and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. You know, it's almost becoming like uh, how PC gaming was in the early days, where that would get updates and patches, and like if there was a problem on like a GameCube or something like that, it would it would stay that way. N64, it would stay that way. Now, now, once a game's out, they can actually fix the game and make it better. And that's an interesting thing. It, 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 there's um, there was a poll I, I heard on one news show about um, are people excited in, about getting the new consoles. Um, and because it's updated, and because I mean, anybody remember Blades when you first got your Xbox 360? Yeah, how horrible yeah. that was! Um, it's been updated, and now when you look at these new consoles, you look at really what what am I do, really going to do with this that I can't do now? You know, I can watch my TV, I can play these games, you know, um, and I think that whole interface and living in that system is 
is something they're going to have to artificially say, we're going to just allow this new service on the new console and not yours, because otherwise, what really doesn't feel new about your Xbox? Does your Xbox feel seven years old at all? No. Because it, it looks new. like a Windows <laughs> phone, the Windows the Windows uh, modern system. It looks like the Surface tablet. I, it looks like the new thing on the market. Mm. You know, so what I mean, I have an app that it looks like on my iPhone and my tablet mm. and my Android device. You know, I, it, it's it's that's one of the coolest things about these becoming, hey, these are computers and being treated like that thing that it, sucks patches. And I think that's what the, that one guy who was said who was talking about the Xbox expanding for another five years. Not not the not the Xbox One, but the Xbox 360. Yeah, they're mm-hmm. going more towards Xbox. They're, they're they're going towards that. Hey, if you don't want to buy this game, you want to buy this console yet, you can still play this game. These well, games on this console. Think about mm-hmm. what PlayStation does. How many years does PlayStation Two stick around? How did the PlayStation One stick around? You know, and well, now P- go ahead. Uh, PS, uh, the PlayStation. Have, remember the little PS One system? Yeah. Yeah, that was brilliant. Mm-hmm. They they marketed I mean, that that extended it like and years. That's just marketing as the cheaper version with cheaper mm-hmm. games. Think about okay, you have the cheaper version, the Xbox 360, with cheaper games. And what if people like some people could buy it because they want a Roku or an Apple TV, but they buy the Xbox because hey, it also could play um, you know old Halo games for the kids. You know, it, it, it solves a problem there, and it gets you into the Xbox ecosystem. There, so, cool. All right. Well, I think that's going to do it for us this week. Um, you can follow us on at Insert Coin TV um, on Twitter. Uh, you can go to the website at Insert or Insert Coin to Begin dot com. Hey, um, our challenge for this Bobby. week is a very what? What's What's today's episode? Oh, this is episode sixty three. So what's tomorrow? next, what's next week, episode? It's episode 64 of Let's Play. So it's going to be a special Nintendo 64-themed episode where we're all going to play a N64 game of our choosing for the challenge. And we want you to play a N64 game and tell us about it on Twitter. Um, just say what game you played and how, what, how you felt about it. So, And we'll, we'll try to get to your uh, reviews of, of the, your games here. So Because you know... Your Nintendo 64 still works to this day. Mm-hmm. Yep. And there's no chance that it will ever, you know, uh, cost you a dime to, to, to buy something. <laughs> <laughs> like, like a uh, if you want the Master Sword, it won't cost you 200 gold to get. Yep, you just get it right off the bat. You just get so. it. When you when you find it. See, see so. what you did. See, Bobby, why'd you, why'd you bring that up? All right, I'm sorry. Well, that'll do it for us. Game over, guys.